Have you ever had that feeling that something's not right? Sort of like a scraping noise, grating, squirling noise. It's time to do breaks. Hi right, guys, don't forget to subscribe and also to tick a like because that helps with the YouTube algorithms. So they tell me. Brake pads are finished, they need changing. Okay, a proper way of doing this really is to take all the wheels off and have a good proper look at the brakes. That's very important. Okay. Right, so now we've got to a point, I've got a yellow chalk mark on there. Um, this is something I was always taught um, because um, we used to do what we call high speed balancing. So high speed balancing used to um, used to have a um, a runner that used to run onto the wheel and used to send the wheel at high speed on the car and used to balance it at high speed of that. So um, it means that if you take the wheel off and you put it back on a different position, you're going to have a different balance. So this is sometimes good practice to make sure you put the wheel back on where it was. Customers are complaining about wheel balancing issues, so it would always be fine, okay? Even though tires get wheel balanced, but some people like to have high speed balance, and that means the stuff gets balanced at a very high speed, um, normally on the car, so on the car balancing. Um, it's a type of dynamic balancing. So looking at the pads, so we get the angle right. Okay, so they've got probably a little bit left. So have the discs. Okay, but I decided to change them. They are quite low. Um, if I can turn the disc a little bit. I'm doing this, I can't really, but you can see there's the pads there, quite low. See here. Um, how do I get down there? There we go, really low. Low. Low, 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 low. Metal, metal, basically. It's almost there. So the first one we have here is a floating caliper and um, thanks to uh, this website here, Pelican uh, Parts, they have um, 
put this on their website. Uh, this shows you how to, well, I think they're trying to show you how to refit it. But basically, this is how uh, you can also remove it. So um, what you do is you're putting a screwdriver over there, a small, thin flat screwdriver. You can unhook that, same with that. And that will cause that to jump out. When refitting, it is a bit tricky. You put the one side in, make sure you go, sometimes they go round the, the caliper like that. Uh, and what you've got to do is use a pair of pliers or something just to help you get into the, the last hole. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky. Uh, there are other ones that are flat plates. They are quite easy to clip in. They're quite easy to do. But this one is quite a difficult one. Okay. So here they're showing us that if you take this dust cover off and that dust cover off, you'll find Allen key bolts in the back there. Uh, you need a seven millimeter Allen key. And that will help you get them off. Okay. Um, I shall show a little Allen key on top here. Uh, during the process, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. And I think I'll show you a set of Allen key bolts. Um, that is to take the caliper off. But you still have this caliper carrier left behind. And how to get the carrier uh, carry off is you need to loosen these. They're probably 18 mils or 16 mil uh, bolts. You loosen them. And there you go. Right. These are 30 mil uh, head bolts. Okay. You loosen them and you can take the caliper out. In fact, you don't have to loosen both of them. You can just loosen this bottom one, not the one that's closest to the pipe, the one away from the pipe. You loosen that one. This whole thing flips up and you can take the brake pads out. Okay, that's if you wanted to do it the quick way. Okay, so now this is a, um, a fixed caliper. So this is outside, that's the inside. Um, so what you need with these ones, uh, because it's a fixed caliper, the caliper itself doesn't come off unless you want to remove the disc. So what you're going to have to do is there will be some bolts in the back there, two bolts, probably 17s, 19s or something like that that you loosen to take this caliper off. But do not take this caliper off if you just want to take the pads off. There is a pin there, and there's a pin there. What you do is you get a pin punch, you smack that pin through, um, take the little bits off on this one, and smack this pin through there. So they both go through, and then what you do is you remove the pads, uh, push the copers back with normal... Um, the normal type of pressing the wind back tool and then uh, fit the new pads and don't forget to fit these anti rattle springs. Okay. And once you push the pins back in from that direction, what you do is you take the punch and give it a good knock until they kind of stick out like this. Uh, it, you'll know they, they won't go any further. Um, knock them until they out and they should be there. Some of them have got like a pin like that with a hole in it and it's got like a bendy type of wire that you've got to put one in the one hole and the other side's also got a hole like this and you've got to make them fit in okay, this is typical of something like a rear wheel drive um, what we have is the hub is um, the first thing you see when you take the wheel off and then you turn the hub upside down and you'll find there is um, bolts at the back where you loosen and take the disc off. So some of them you have to take the hub off to change the disc. Another test we need to do on a disc brake system is called disc runout or general runout. So runout is how much the disc wobbles off true center. Okay, so there is a set tolerance that the manufacturers give you. This tolerance uh, needs to be um, met because if you do not have um, a relatively straight moving disc, you're going to get what we call a brake judder. So judder is when the brake pedal pulsates 
during braking. Not the ABS pulsating when you brake heavy and the ABS uh, pulsates, but this is the actual brake pedal. Feels like it's it's moving to the form on the disc. Okay, so for assessment purposes, this is one of the things that we need to do as as assessment when you're learning your trade. Uh, but as in the industry, we only really use this to prove a warranty purpose or if a, if a customer is complaining about a brake judder and um, you don't physically feel it on a test drive, uh, this is one way of proving to a customer or maybe the other way around, a customer proving that there is a fault. 10 mils in and that is a great place to set it and you can see all the bolts are in here. Um, you only need really two, but you can put all five in um two when i say two i say two not on just on on one side but diagonally across two good solid diagonally across i probably would have gone for about three here um you stack it up with washers and you make sure the discs are being forced against the hub and and what you do is you spin this slowly and you take a reading from your meter Learning to read the micrometer is quite a tricky thing. Uh, we're saying that this is accurate to 0 0.01. And this specific one can only measure between 0 and 25 millimeters. You do get others that will measure only from 25 to 50. That means there will be a 25 mil gap here. This is a lesson on its own how to read this uh, gauge. Uh, which will be a future series of mine. Right, so this is an example of how you would use the uh, micrometer to measure the disc thickness. So you'd measure the disc thickness and uh, you'll have some type of lock. You will lock it and then you'll take your reading. Okay, and then you write your reading down. Right, so we're looking at a, uh, a disc here that is quite badly worn. So there's, there's a point that you go, we can't use this disc anymore. And that is when the manufacturers say that the disc mustn't be thinner. So the diameter from here and the other side of the disc about 10 mils in, you measure with a micrometer and you measure the thickness of the disc. And that should not be more than 19 millimeters because this is a ventilated disc. What you can see is actually happened here is we've got a ridge that goes down, created a valley like that. So what we've got is we've got that piece missing basically. So if you're gonna put a brand new pad in, set of brake pads, you have to brake pad is going to be square like this you're going to have to do what we call chamfering so you're going to have to make the pad go in a bit though we don't recommend if it looks this bad you're going to have to take the pad in a bit of the brake pad off like that and a portion off there and that's called chamfering so we chamfer it at you could probably say like at a 45 degree angle or so that's called chamfering so what happens is it almost forms the same shape as this and fits in there and then you can fit the brake pads but the problem with this is that this disc and this brake pad have only got a certain amount of distance allowed so what could happen is that this backing plate once the brake pad is worn right down the backing plate will start going as close as possible to this disc and if this disc is also badly worn metal and metal start scraping eventually this metal piece will come out of the saddle and end up in the road and then the piston will fall out stick to the recommended uh, 19 millimeters on this model so different vehicles have different settings
on car skimming. So what they do is they'll come and they will cut this metal off. That metal off and that metal off and flatten this whole surface again. Nice and flat. As long, uh, lower than 20 millimeters. So they can still skim that for you. And you can put a brand new set of pads on without chamfering them. So you could say your, your disc have got probably one skimming life. So when there's about two mils left on the brake pads, the front brake pads, this will be at the minimum point and the light would pop up on the dashboard. Hang on, every time I pull up my handbrake, the handbrake light doesn't go off, so I need a new handbrake light. No, you need to check your brake fluid bottle because chances are your fluid is right down. And this was a wonderful idea, except for one problem. Every time a car gets serviced, we do the same thing and we top up the bottle. We've all just done this. We've naturally just followed the set of guidelines. And when a customer's car comes in for service, we top up the bottle. We do it. And this is why also, when we push the pistons back, fluid all of a sudden comes out the bottle because it's been topped up too high. You would have seen that if the, when you push the pads back, the pistons back, it would stop on the exact max mark. It would be perfect. And that would tell you that no one has topped up the brake fluid. But a constant topping up brake fluid, we don't get that warning. We need to also know if the brake fluid needs to be changed. If the brake fluid needs changing, we need to test the brake fluid. So what are we testing for? So we're testing to see how much content of water is in the brake fluid. If we have too much water in, in our brake fluid, fluid getting too hot and actually boiling, and that will reduce our braking. And why do we have water in brake fluid? It's hygroscopic. And we need that because what it does, it helps us get rid of all the moisture and everything in our braking system. Uh, when brake fluid is very dark in color, almost black, that's when there's a huge content of water in it. trying to push the pads back you'll need to have something like this little sucker that you can suck the brake fluid out with or a brake fluid syringe okay so um wow wow let me ask you something if you're gonna push those brake calipers back mm -hmm. yeah what do you do you just push them back so is that what you do you just push them back mm -hmm. yeah no no? Why no? No, no. Because you need to... Need to what? Because you need to open up the brake fluid bottle cap. Ah, yeah. Brake fluid bottle Take cap, Take the fluid yeah. out. Ah. Is that all? Yeah. No. No. Check the level. Make sure it is down by minimum. If it's ah. not down by minimum, brake fluid is going to come out the top. Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. Is that all you got to check? Yeah. So you've taken the brake shoes off. Now you can push those piston calipers back. Yeah. You've taken the brake shoes off, and now you can push Taking the, brake the shoes pistons off. back. Push pistons back, yeah. 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 No. No. Because those wheel cylinders are going to jump out. Oh, yeah. No, because the wheel cylinders are going to jump out. Oh, right. It's going to be fluid everywhere. Oh. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you want to make sure fluid doesn't fly out everywhere. I can't see in these things, man. Mmm. <laughs> so what we can do... Yeah. 
What do you do? Stop Don't the know. pistons from jumping out. Well, you use some hose pipe clamps. Hose, ah, you ah, only got yeah. one hose pipe clamp, and you work it on this system. Oh, like those above there. there. All right, yeah. But on this system, you're going to need two hose pipe clamps. Yes. Yeah, for, for each wheel. Or, really. and it, if you must, not joined. on the wheel cylinder, put cable tie around the wheel cylinders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cable ties around the wheel cylinders. That's a good Don't idea. Don't get it wrong. No. You should have been telling them this. I, I, I haven't had the chance. I've just, just, just started. Don't need uh, somebody to just fly in here and be bossy. Hey, I'm out of here. Ciao for now. Who the hell was that? Dr. Mechanic. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe and also to tick a like because that helps with the YouTube algorithms. So they tell me. Okay, so over here I have... Um, we push the caliper piston back. I'm using a tool to help us push it back. Um, generally, you can use something like a... a, a Pretty big screwdriver though it could damage the rubbers but you could also use a big pair of uh, water pump pliers uh, which could also do the same job this is just a lovely tool to have and you can wind it back the idea is if you wind it back wind it back straight okay don't let it bend because if it bends it's gonna damage the uh, the piston and the, how the seal work together Okay, just make sure when you're doing this, there's no signs of uh, brake fluid pouring out anywhere, uh, especially underneath the car. All right, so let's keep going. Just back until it says no more. Uh, what we do is we give this a bit of clean off with a uh, wire brush, a bit of clean off there. Give this a little bit of clean off with the wire brush, make sure there's no sticky bits. Uh, we'll be taking this caliper off, uh, caliper sh uh, saddle taking that off with the two bolts in the back there okay and I'll be changing these discs so I've got two little uh, torques here it's probably about torque 35s probably 35 torques I haven't tested it yet uh, stuck my neck out on that one but um, probably 35s I've got to loosen them and take off the uh, disc right let me check the disc off you can see there, um, the bolts are quite a rusty place. I've still got my line there. Um, a good idea would be to clean the surface a little bit. You can use a little bit of emery paper, just give it a bit of a rub over it. We, we don't want bits of rust. Um, I can just go slightly off angle. So we'll do that quickly. Using safety goggles or safety glasses and uh, wire brush. We'll clean off the bits and pieces. Okay, so those are all nice and clean. You can see how it's shiny a little bit. Clean that off. We've cleaned this off. Okay, giving it a bit of a shine. It's not the best. I mean, um, it doesn't have to be. Don't have to make it shine, 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 shine. But just enough to make sure that nothing's going to get stuck. The old pads used to uh, scrape on. Right, so. Um, we know the pads can only go in one way. That's the inner one. The evidence is that it's got a ring left on it. And um, it looks like it's got a plate. They will see on the new ones what they look like. And the outer one has got a plate on an anti-rattle plate, which uh, will cope with, I call this copper slip. This is copper grease. Not the, there are other brands out there. I don't want to mention, use this brand. But uh, there are different brands. There's different brands of spark plugs too, so and brake pads. So don't. Uh, I've never used these brake pads before. I've used grease before, but I haven't used these brake pads before, so I don't know um, much about them. They're pretty much the same, I would say. These here are little plungers, so we can pull it out like this. 
just get it like that. Now what we do with this, we just make sure there's grease in there. Uh, we used to have problems with the old uh, um, microbuses, stuff like that, they used to rattle. So if you don't want your brakes to rattle, make sure there's some grease in there. Just needs a little bit of grease, not too much. That's enough to um, stop it rattling. Okay. Here is, um, there is a top pin and a bottom pin. You won't see it now, but when you pull them out, you'll see the pins are different. And uh, you can see that there's a shape there. So that shape's got to fit perfectly onto the caliper's piece. It's very hard to explain, but you can see there's a cutout on the caliper there. That cutout must fit in there perfectly. So they might be slightly scared at the moment, but we'll make sure they're straight and we'll get them in. Okay. Okay, so what we've got, we've got this back on here. I'm turning them that way a little bit because that's how the caliper fits on. Slightly turned. We've greased it. See, make sure they're not twisted. Um, greased it. I can't remember how my cameraman was operating this. Alright. They're greased. Okay. With a bit of a spray here. Yeah. Um, I had to clean these discs with some uh, brake cleaner. Nice and clean this now. The caliper's been cleaned. We've torqued the bolts at the back to their correct settings. And now it's a case of fitting the brake pads back on. Uh, let's see how it goes. La la la. So here we are again. So, copper, copper grease. Bring your copper grease. Don't have to apply too much. Just apply a little bit on. That's probably way too much already. Okay. Uh, we can transfer some of it over to the side. So that's the inner one with the funny uh, clip on the side. This is the outer one. So the inner one will get most of its contact there. Right. And the outer one will get most of its contact to the outer side. So we'll spread out more outer. Uh, maybe a little bit there somewhere. But it will probably be like that. So probably um, too much is probably... Not the best idea. You don't want to have too much grease. Okay. Um, some of this grease we can actually add to here. We add it there. Grease up the pads. Don't have to put too much grease on. Just enough to cover certain points, and uh, we'll put them in. You can see they've got a bit of grease on. They're in place. Nice and brand new pads. Now it's to fit on the caliper. Some come with new screws, this one hasn't. Um, the only manufacturers give you new screws. That's part of the um, idea of this is what you're going to get the best by uh, getting screws from them. Or break bads from them, actually. Right, so both sides are done. There we go. Both done. Both greased up. Okay. Brakes are done, need to pump the brakes, make sure the pedal's hard, and then what you've got to do is take it for a test drive, make sure the brakes are fine. Just one more thing, when you give it to a customer, tell them that they need to do no heavy braking. Catch you later. Oh, come on, let me play. Come on now, man. Oh, I've had enough of this rubbish. Never fair. I've had enough of this.